that is people at the too big to fail banks are too big to prosecute. <laughs> I mean, in the last four years, you know, you want to know how many Wall Street executives have been convicted of fraud? Has to be hundreds. Uh, zero. Oh. Leaving analysts to believe certain members of the political elite are exempt from prosecution. Barnier says the rules would make Europe's financial system more stable and transparent. We are back once again to talk about bankers and the way they're running the country into the ground. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Monica Salmer. It's so good to have you along here as we talk about the monetary system and give you an update that you're probably not going to get on mainstream news. Probably not. They're throwing bankers in jail. Not in not in the USA and not in Canada. Appar yeah. Apparently there's a what? A congressional investigation? Yeah, Elizabeth Warren's heading it up. Okay. Awesome. So right now there's a congressional investigation into bankers and the way they scammed everybody. We talk about the fact money gets made up out of nowhere and bankers are never thrown in jail in this continent. In Iceland they are though. But they've been questioning the Justice Department on just that issue. And apparently we have a clip. So let's get informed right here. Radio Free Canada. Bank spank time as we take a look at the monetary system. Everybody smile. Smile. <laughs> From New York, here's T.J. Walker. Yesterday, Attorney General Eric Holder announced what everyone thought, but no one really thought the Attorney General would say publicly, and that is people at the too-big-to-fail banks are too big to prosecute. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have recollection of uh, DOJ uh, prosecuting uh, any high-profile financial criminal convictions in either companies or individuals. We need to find out uh, why we aren't having these high profile cases. The concern that you have raised is one that I frankly share. And I'm not talking about HSBC now, because that, that, that maybe that not be appropriate. But I am concerned that the size of some of these institutions becomes so large that it does become difficult for us to, um, to prosecute them when we are hit with um, indications that if you do prosecute, if you do bring a criminal charge, uh, it will have a negative impact on the national economy, perhaps even the world economy. And I think that is a function of the fact that some of these institutions have become too large. Now, I've been saying that for years. Paul Krugman has, others have, but now, now it's official. And it's been almost five years since the financial crisis, but the big banks are still too big to fail. That means they are subsidized by about $83 billion a year by American taxpayers and are still not being held fully accountable for breaking the law. Attorney General Holder's testimony that the biggest banks are too big to jail shows once again that it is past time to end too big to fail. Too big to fail. That's what they've been saying. Too big to jail? Sounds like a hostage situation to me. I mean, we're being held, uh, actually being held hostage by major banks. Uh, Glass Spiegel getting erased and your savings get, getting attached to Wall Street was the problem. But we haven't heard about that in mainstream media, have we? Isn't that funny? Yeah. Surprising. Not really, but I, can't, I can't believe that mainstream media isn't talking about the fact that banks are running the country into the ground. Is it because mainstream media is funded by the banks or sponsored? Well, just maybe. Isn't there a kind of correlation in there? I think that's one plus one equaling two. And mm. apparently one plus one equals fish. Just ask <laughs> Stephen Harper. Uh, we've got it. Banks, banks coming up right now. And we've got it for you because the mainstream media is not talking about the fact that banks make money up out of nowhere and that we bailed out our banks right here in Canada to the tune of how many billions? I can't remember the amount right now. But right now, me and you are paying off $3,500 in banking overdrafts from 2008. That's not carried. Ah, uh, right here. Banks Bank. Right. Well, we got what's our clip? Oh, big news on the sequester. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's right. have it. Let's do it. Banks in the sequester. The FBI is experiencing <laughs> we some spending cuts, and uh, they're not too happy about it. In fact, one of the things that they're complaining about the most is the fact that because of these spending cuts, they are unable to continue their investigations into Wall Street fraud. 
there were investigations into <laughs> Wall Street fraud. Yeah. I mean, in the last four years, do you, know, you want to know how many Wall Street executives have been convicted of fraud? It has to be hundreds. Uh, zero. Oh, oh, or, or that. Shit. Yeah. So um, it's really, really difficult to feel any type of sympathy for the FBI, especially since they've done very little when it comes to Wall Street fraud. Uh, but it, it's incredible that this is the kind of story that's getting some attention when you know there are a number of uh, you know social services and government programs that help the poor. Those programs got cut, and I don't hear anybody crying about that. I like the idea that they found a silver lining that's like Christmas in February. Like, oh, our budget was cut, so we can't investigate Wall Street anymore. Is, like, is the sequester just going to be their scapegoat for yeah. why they've done absolutely nothing when it comes yeah. to Wall Street fraud? I think so. But, you know, just to let you know what the FBI uh, said in their letter, they said that the sequester will cause current financial crimes investigations to slow as workload is spread among a reduced workforce. For in yeah. some instances, such delays could affect the timely interviews of witnesses and collection of evidence <laughs> leads <laughs> we got them working around the clock oh yeah they've been working so hard for the last four years <laughs> we join them in their general mocking attitude <laughs> well i think the fbi is too busy setting up fake terrorists to bust their old bob plots but that's Going to cut down on the number of officers available to set up fake terror props. <laughs> yeah, well, that, maybe. That could be a problem, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's priorities, right, guys? Right, that's right. Okay. Priorities. They've no. got priorities. Of course, you know, that's also another reason they can't pull out of Afghanistan, because boats are expensive. <laughs> 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 Far be it from us to point out facts or anything like that. We are talking about the fact that these banks do need to be taken up. But in Kabul, there's a different story. Yes? Yes, there is. I'd never heard about this in mainstream. That's probably This why is fantastic. Al Jazeera is carrying it. Okay. In a courtroom in central Kabul, the verdicts on two of the country's top banking executives found guilty of orchestrating a billion dollar fraud. First, the chief executive, Khalilullah Farouzi. To return the amount of $530,988,240 from the date he was arrested and sentenced to five years in jail. Then the chairman, Shir Khan Fanoud. To return $278,573,054 from the date of his house arrest and sentenced to five years in jail. As ordinary, Afghans deposited their money into the country's biggest bank. The bosses were agreeing huge loans at 0% interest and no payback plan to some of the country's most powerful figures. Huge wads of money were smuggled out of the country in food trolleys on board Pamir Airlines planes or transferred by wire often to Dubai. The chairman invested $150 million into property there that will now be commandeered by the court. But one man not in court today was President Karzai's brother, one of the bank's major shareholders. He escaped prosecution after the president ordered that anyone who paid back the money would not be charged. But the judge has said Mamu Karzai still owes $9 million, leaving analysts to believe certain members of the political elite are exempt from prosecution. It was the Afghan government that bailed out the Kabul bank. $982 million have been embezzled. Just $235 million has so far been recovered, leaving the state and the Afghan people $747 million out of pocket. A staggering figure when the average wage here in Afghanistan is just $500 a year. Suterton, Al Jazeera, Kabul. But you know, if you take a look at the um, economic, economic hitman, Oh, yeah, John Perkins. This is business as usual. But can you believe that? $500 a year? Greed is a mental illness. Yeah, it is. Greed. All over the world. You know, that actually, that's, a, that's right on the money. Greed is a mental illness. Yeah, it's an aberration, I believe, and the psychotics are in charge. That one, that you, the documentary that you showed me earlier. American Autumn. American Autumn talks about the fact that they're glorifying greed. Yeah. What's that about? That's crazy. But you see it out of the baby boomers right now. Yeah. My retirement, my vacations, my ability to go shopping. That's all they care about. Well, sure. And now that their pensions have gone down or their investments are out, they're back in the workforce. Of course. And whining well, about it. But yeah. not talking about never working on building your community. Don't work on getting to know your neighbors. Uh, don't or, create municipal sustainability. Yeah. No manufacturing because it's about me. 
Mm. And my greed. I know. Let's build the pipeline pipes in India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> what on earth? Okay. You're right. Okay. That I forgot about that. That yeah. the pipes are being built in India that we're putting in BC. And they're probably being installed by Chinese workers. Ah, yes. And that's working out so well for us. Uh, you take a look at one of the mining operations with an Indian band. They've got 500 employees, three natives, and 497 Chinese. Hmm. That's for real. That's in British Columbia. Yeah, but it is nice to see that some countries are cracking down on big bonuses for banks and on fraud. Let's do it. EU plans to cap bankers' bonuses have been slammed in London's Canary Wharf, home to many global banks. The provisional deal would see bankers face an automatic cap set at a par with their salaries, which could only be raised twice if the bank's shareholders voted in favour. But many see it as an unfair restriction. Sports stars, they make a lot of money, aren't they? And there's no limit on what they can make, so I'm not sure you want to cap bankers' bonuses. It's anti-capitalist. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't agree. Not at all. No, because if you have a grocer man and he makes, does really well you know, in the market, he does really well, sells loads of fruits, he can make loads of profit, he gets to keep it. What? No one would say, oh, no, he's making too much money from those fruits. Cap his income. But the EU's internal market commissioner doesn't believe the curbs will drive banks out of the city, Europe's biggest financial centre, to less regulated markets outside the bloc like Switzerland or Singapore. It sets out for the first time, he says, in the world's banking history, liquidity rules. If these rules had existed for five or six years already, we probably wouldn't have had the Lehman Brothers affair, he added. Barnier says the rules would make Europe's financial system more stable and transparent and are a fair response to taxpayers' anger over the huge cost of rescuing banks. Okay, consensus. Should bankers have caps? I believe so. Well, yeah. Yeah? They're okay. making money. I can't believe the one guy who said, well, sports stars make unlimited amount of money. Maybe we should allow bankers to. And they're afraid it won't drive them out of the city of London. I think they should drive them out with a whip. <laughs> and the analogy of the fruit vendor I know. to a banker. Hello. Yeah, hello. I don't Not create even fruit close. out of nothing. Yeah, there you go. You actually <gasps> work for it. Yeah. Banks create money out of nowhere. Of course, the mainstream media, they're not covering that one fact because it's kind of scary. Well, don't you know that banks contribute to the economy? They cause it to grow like cancer. <laughs> actually, if you take a look at the mathematical, statistical way that um, supposed capitalism working, it is cancer. Oh, it yeah. just takes care of itself. It consumes everything around it, and it causes failure of the system that it's consuming. That's right. But, you know, far be it from us to point out any facts to the Harper conservatives and, of course, us pointing out the Council of Policy Alternatives that pointed out the fact that we bailed out our banks. Poor Rob's dying in the background. Oh, oh well, Are you okay, you man? Know, I'd be getting sick, too. I'm better now. <laughs> I'm better now. But okay, they said something about Switzerland. And isn't Switzerland causing a reduction in CEO pay as well? Yes. Too bad for them. I don't think they deserve it. They make money up out of nowhere, and they do no work for it. And then they repossess the world. Well, what a thought. Yeah. Oh, well, make sure you spank your banker today. Remind them they make up money out of nowhere. And parasites on society are being routed out right now. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Monica Selmark. Thanks for joining us. we got more to come. Stay tuned. This is Radio Free Canada. Canada used to have what is called a social safety net. That net used to consist of welfare and UI checks, and it ensured that people would not have to steal to live. But now there are no effective social safety nets left, except for the richest of the rich. How does it work? Well, it's pretty simple. Major corporations are awarded subsidies, tax breaks, and eased regulations, and you are not. Not convinced? Just remember that you pay 65% of your wages in taxes, and Canadian banks, corporations, pay no taxes at all. But things are changing. From Egypt to Toronto, from Victoria to Halifax, people are winning battles by standing up for what is right. People like me and you. On January 28th, we are asking you to go to your city hall at 12 noon all across the country. Spread this video around and stand up against corporate welfare and get our safe streets back in an effective way.